with winter just around the corner and with our very cool wet growing season almost at an end I thought today would be a good time to do a Venus flytrap update. Let's get into it. My name is Jerry from Suckland Flytraps. Okay guys, so this is the start of my Venus flytrap collection here on my elevator wooden growing platform. Mixed with these flytraps, I've got other species such as Drosera plants. And all from this point onwards down to the end of the wooden platform, they're all low-lying low -lying plants. There's a good reason for that. That's purely because the sun sets over there in the west and all the plants being low-lying get their fair share of sun. So they all have ideal growing conditions with plenty of sunlight and together with this elevated wooden platform because of this color bond fence they do get their sunlight so as a general rule guys the more sunlight you can give these plants the healthier and more vibrantly colored they will be okay all right so let's get back to this section over here I've got these Big mouth Venus fly traps. They're quite small in size, so I did run out of stock around about the beginning of summer. So um, that's purely because there was so much demand for these plants, and also because I grow healthy plants. But um, I these ones are quite small, so I'm just basically waiting for these plants to grow in size for the next growing season, where I can sell them either individually in pots or through the mail. Over here I've got Drosera pygmyae. They had beautiful white flowers yesterday because it was sunnier. Now there's none to be found purely because it's uh, just overcast. DCXL cultivar over there. Just waiting for them to increase in size and numbers. Moving along I've got Drosera bermanii over here. Tropical sundews. More over there. I've got some over there being overshadowed by those pictures which I'm going to have to prune very shortly. And of course over here I've got a very red form of Drosera capensis. Looking beautiful with its pink, purple flowers. So this year we had an unprecedented amount of rain with our La Nina. We had cooler temperatures and we had plenty of rain. And if anything sums it up, it's this pot over here. Have a look at this. You can see the lush green moss surrounding the other plants over here. And that's purely because moss likes cool, uh, damp temperature, uh, damp growing conditions. And you'll see a lot of these pots with that moss coming through, which I don't actually mind because it does contrast beautifully with the other plants, especially if those plants have got a reddish tinge to them, like these tropical sundews or there's deep red traps of these big mouths looking beautiful at one stage some of the water the water that we had in these trays quite high some got up to around about this high in the pots I've got drain trials in here but sometimes they do get blocked and um, the fact that they've all recovered means that they can be quite tolerant of high water temp uh, water levels you just got to take that water out relatively quickly. Now, so over here, look how beautiful these leaves, red leaves look when they're all together. These are Drosera uh, banata tea form sundews. These are native Australian sundews, characterized by their T or Y shaped leaves. And then, of course, I've got these Drosera capensis, South African sundews. And you've got more greener leaf bases over there. So these Drosera capensis, they will continue growing through the winter. They don't actually go dormant. Whereas the Drosera banata, they do go dormant. Okay, guys? So if your plant is starting to shed its leaves, some of the leaves are starting to die off, like this one over here, it's completely normal. All right? It's just getting ready for winter dormancy. So a little bit of information like that really does go a long way. Okay, some more 
Venus flytraps here. So these are different cultivars over here. I realized at the beginning of summer that I needed more stock, so I ordered these various cultivars of Venus flytraps and I just put them all together in the one pot. Again, purely to save space. But what I really love about this is that they have that nice color effect with those different colored traps. Look at that, that looks quite nice. So just waiting for these to get bigger and I'll start to sell these in the next growing season. Okay, more plants over here, more big mouths, more Drosera capensis and more Drosera bermanii, different cultivars I've got over here. I've got bristle mouths, bristle tooth, sorry. They're characterized by their bristles around the edges of the traps rather than teeth, like you normally find in fly traps, Venus fly traps. But uh, some of these are quite small. Again, I'm just waiting out for them to get bigger for the next growing season. And here are the shark's teeth. They're looking quite nice. Again, you can see those triangle uh, teeth around the edges of the trap. Okay, moving along, I thought I'd have a little bit of a miniature garden happening here at the start of last growing season. I've got this uh, Saracenia Flava Red Tube crossed with Nalata Red Throat, so it's basically a hybrid. Love those deep red traps. And down the base there I've got, sticking with the deep red colour theme, I've got the big mouth fly traps with their deep red traps. And something I didn't intend was to have Drostra capensis growing in there. But they're looking quite nice as well. They're just seedlings. And over here I've got Saracenia lacophila. This is a red vein form. Because it's uh, autumn now, it's really come up with its really nice pictures. And every time I come up here, I look at the silhouette. I know there's insects caught in there. And that's been confirmed by this discoloration around the outside of the picture as the enzymes, digestive enzymes, get released by the plant. So, yeah, it's quite nice to see that. See your plants happily feeding. So, moving along, again, I've got more uh, big mouth cultivars, Benata, Crossra Benata. Now, at this time of the year, it's normal for your plant to produce autumn winter leaves okay so autumn winter leaves are quite short and stubby compared to the leaves which were produced in spring summer and this plant over here uh, really epitomizes what's happening with uh, the leaves right now see those older long leaves they were produced in the warmer months and now these shorter stubbier leaves are being produced that's quite normal okay guys so I did a video about the different types of leaves which are produced by Venus fly traps depending on the time of the year and go and have a look at my previous video in my channel for a really detailed uh, look at the leaves okay this one over here is a red piranha I just love how deep red those traps are really really nice gorgeous okay more sun juice over there Plenty of this lush green moss, as I said. Cool, wet growing conditions. Have a look over here. I've got some Drosera pygmeae. Now, Drosera pygmeae, they expect dry summers and cool, damp winters. So because we had a La Nina, the, the uh, plants were sort of a little bit confused as to whether they should slow down their growth because it was quite wet and damp and cool. So that's why they're not looking the best, but I expect them to look better as the cooler temperatures arrive with winter. More different cultivars over here.
Okay, so over here I've got individual pot plants. So these ones are for sale. Unfortunately, they're only for sale for people that can come visit my nursery. Sorry about that for everyone else, but I just purely don't have enough to send through the mail. So if you're interested in buying these individual pot plants, send me an email just to show you what I do have available. I've got these Akai Roo, and I've got a lot of these pot plants have got other sundews growing in there, like these tropical sundews. Now just to let you know guys, if you are going to water these plants, they will go dormant in winter. A lot of these ones already are sort of dormant, they sort of stop growing. So just to be aware of that. Um, over here I've got a big mouth again. You can see those wrinkled leaves in the middle. That's a sure sign that hey, it's getting ready for dormancy. Got some shark tooth over here. So yeah, just send me an email guys and I will send you a catalogue with the latest price list and uh, you can come around and pick it up or what I can do, I can drop them off outside of my house just leave them there after payment and that's worked quite well for uh, other customers. I've got some bristle tooths over here, more Akai Roos. I've got this bristle tooth over here, look at that. See those bristles around the edges of the traps. And again, got some sundews there, beautiful sundews coming in there as well, tropical sundews. Over here I've got a G7 times G14. They're characterized by these long red, uh, long green leaf bases and they're deep red traps, beautiful cultivar. So most of these are for sale, not all of them, but uh, yeah, just send me an email and I will let you know which ones are available and the price and how we can arrange uh, pickup of the plants. Okay guys, so that's just a rundown of my Venus flytraps here at my nursery.